first and foremost, we always like to give praise and honor to the God of Israel, of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Tonight is the last uh, night of the feast, well, last day of the feast on the bread. And um, these high holy days are very, very, very important, very serious in God's eyes. These holy days are Sabbaths. These holy days are Sabbaths. As we learned about last Sabbath, on the seventh day of the Sabbath, how serious God is about his holy days. And these are the days of very, they are very serious to him. And I really try, I'm really trying to make sure y'all understand that. And when you dealing with these our holy days, they have instructions. They have instructions that we must follow. So we're going to do what we're supposed to do, which is follow our Father and his instructions. We're going to start in Leviticus chapter 23. Leviticus chapter 23, we're going to start with verse 1. Because these feast days, these high holy days, when we say high, that means they fall not on the regular Sabbath day, which is the seventh day of the week. They fall in the middle of the week, or the beginning, or the end of the week. When you're dealing with the high holy days, they don't come every, they don't come the same way every year. They come out the lunar calendar, which is, you know, we, we judge our high holy days off by the moon. And once we saw a count, have our count in a bib, which is the spring, the 14th day of the first month of the new moon, that's how we start the year off. That's how we know when we're supposed to do these days. As you keep coming, you'll understand more and more. So we're going to get our instructions from our dad. If you're not following this, these laws, these statutes, what we're reading today, Jesus ain't your dad. Satan is your dad. And I, and I don't strain my, and I don't stutter when I say it. Most people like to play with this. This is not nothing to play with. If you don't follow him, ain't going to too highway. The highway of God and the highway of Satan. You must follow his highway in order to receive salvation. So you got to make sure that you are following the directions of the book, not the pastor. Not your mama, not your dad, not your brother, sister. You got to deliver yourself from that. You got to sanctify yourself from that. Set yourself self apart. But if you want to swim in the lake of fire with them, go ahead. Because we're going to be judged on this stuff. Every one of these laws. And we have a lot to cover. So don't take it, don't take it like it's just like, okay, we just come together. And it's very serious. Go start at verse 1. Go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them concerning the feasts of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations. Even these are my feasts. We always try to stress this in Israel because they will tell you that these are the Jews' feasts. These are the Israelites' feasts. Who did Moses say the feasts are for? Or, excuse me, the feasts are. They're the Lord's feast, Jesus' feast. And the whole world was following, not just the Jews, the Gentiles, the, the Hamites, all the different nations. If you want salvation, you have to follow the Lord's feast. He stressed that. But go ahead. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. He's talking about this, the seventh day feast. What we must do in that, that uh, period of time, or the period of week, which is the seventh day, which is Saturday, as the world say. He said, this is a feast. Now we're going to get down to his ho how holy days. Go ahead. Verse 4. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocation which you shall proclaim in their seasons. This is what we're doing. We're proclaiming it in their seasons. 
season me is a time and a place you must do these feasts. Not when every second Sunday, every first Sunday, when they tell you to take communion, you're taking the bread and wine. You don't take it every Sunday, every second Sunday, once out of the month, twice out of the month. You take it one time a year. Amen. This is the Lord's Passover at evening, as we're about to read today. Go ahead. In the 14th day of the first month at evening is the Lord's Passover. This is the season we take it in, which is a beer, which is the spring. We already done that last week. Go ahead. And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Lord. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. In the first day you shall have an holy convocation. Yes, sir. You shall do no survival work therein. We did that last week on a Friday. That's when we took, that's when we uh, ate, that's when we had our holy Feast of Unleavened Bread. We follow the instructions of the Lord. We're not just doing this because... I say do it. We do all this because the books say do it. These are the instructions. If you follow the instructions, you got a good chance of having salvation instead of following the word. Go ahead. But ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days. In the seventh day is an holy convocation. Yes, sir. Ye shall do no survival work therein. This is what we have today, right now, in that seventh day feast, right now. But we have the Feast of Living Bread. From this evening all the way to Friday to uh, Thursday evening is a whole 24 hour period of time where we must observe this feast. And make sure you understand, he says, do no serve our work, meaning that you don't work on this day. That's the instruction. You take a day off from work. These are the instructions. So we receive our instruction from our Father. But most people say, will tell you that. It's the Old Testament. Y'all follow in the Old Testament. When Jesus died on the cross, they, didn't do, they did not do that in the New Testament. Let's, let's go see. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 4. They always like to follow Paul, right? 1 Corinthians chapter 5. We're going to start with verse 4. Let's see if Brother Paul kept the feast of living bread. Mm -hmm. Amen. See, we've got to understand that this one just for the Old Testament readers and the Old Testament people back in the day. They kept these feasts even when Jesus died on the cross. After he died on the cross, they still kept all his high holy day. They still kept it. Mm -hmm. But they want to stress to you that we are on a new dispensation. We are on a Paul dispensation. Christ did never tell you to follow Paul. But we're going to start with 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 4. Let's look at that. Go ahead. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together, and my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is what we're doing today. We're gathered together. These Sabbaths he's telling us to gather together. Holy complication. The seven day Sabbath and also the uh, high holy day Sabbath. Go ahead. To deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, uh -huh. that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Go ahead. Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveth the whole lump? See, with so many people think God is just really just talking about bread. This is a teaching tool. This is metaphorically symbolic what he's teaching you about yeast and bread. It's so much more than just yeast and bread. He's talking about purging our sin. He's talking about putting sin out your life. He's just giving you an example how you would eat, how bread make, how yeast make bread rises. You can see that. Just like when sin gets in our life, it's going to expose us. We can see that. He wants us to make sure we focus. Especially around this time, it's all the time we should focus on our sin. But he wants us to make sure we understand. In these feasts of living bread, he wants you to purge up all that sin. Watch it. Go ahead. Verse 7. Purge out therefore the old leaven. Yes, sir. That ye may be a new law, as ye are on leaven. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed. 
for us. Yes, sir. Christ is our Passover. He sacrificed for us. Meaning, when you read those scriptures in Leviticus chapter 23, when he's telling you to take the blood of a lamb, we don't have to do that part because Christ's body was sufficient for all. He was our Passover. So we just substitute Christ's blood in his body where the lamb should be. So it's the same law. He just changed the ordinance. Meaning that you got a cake, or you can make the cake rise with yeast, or you can make the cake rise with eggs. Whichever way. So Christ said, back then you got your sin forgiven for blood sacrifice, but now you got to get your sin forgiven because of my blood when I died on the cross for you. That's all we're doing right now. I'm just trying to make sure you understand. Because people get twisted when you see, well, y'all got to offer the blood sacrifice. No, we don't. Christ died on the cross for that. We just followed the other ordinances. He just changed it and put his body there. But go ahead. Listen to what Paul say right here. Verse 8. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven. Yes, sir. Neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Now, if you was a New Testament reader, what would that what feast he talking about? Most of the New Testament readers would say, oh, he must be talking about Christmas. Must be talking about Easter. What feast we don't keep with leaven? The feast of unleavened bread. So Brother Paul is following the feast and don't keep this feast with leaven. He's doing the same thing. Let's continue. Let's go back to Exodus chapter 13. Exodus chapter 13. Just follow the ordinance of these feasts. Exodus 13 and verse 3. I want to make sure y'all understand what you're doing. It ain't for me to just understand what I'm doing. I got to make sure y'all understand. When Paul said keep this feast without leaven, what's he talking about? And you go to the pastor inside the church, they won't even know what he's talking about. All they said, you just don't keep the leaven of the Pharisees. Yeah, you're right, but it's also, he said, a feast. Don't keep this feast. We don't eat bread for seven days. This is what he's talking about. Exodus chapter 13 and verse 3. Go ahead. And Moses said unto the people, Remember this day in which ye came out from Egypt, yes, sir. out of the house of bondage, for by strength of hand, the Lord brought you out from this place. That shall no leavened bread be eaten. That's the time when Israel was in the land in Egypt. They was in captivity for 400 years. And God delivered them out of the land. And they had unleavened cakes made. They couldn't eat it. So they, once they got out of Egypt, they took them cakes with them. And then he said, okay, once you have the unleavened cakes, this is what you must do. Go ahead. This day came ye out in the month Abel. Yes, sir. That's the beginning of the year. This is the month Abel right now. Spring. Go ahead. And it shall be when the Lord shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, which he swore unto thy fathers to give thee a land flowing with milk and honey. Yes, sir. That thou shalt keep this service in this month. Keep a service. This is what we're doing. We're keeping the service of the feast of unleavened bread in this month. Go ahead. Seven days thou shalt eat unleavened bread, and in the seventh day shall be a feast to the Lord. This is what we're doing now. So you see the instruction. Seven days. We don't eat bread with yeast in it. Leaven is talking about yeast. We abstain from that. And you got to make sure you keep it on your mind. If you don't keep it on your mind, you'll just follow the word. And end up messing up. But when you, if you mess up, it's your first time doing this, repent and keep going. Go ahead. Unleavened bread shall be eaten seven days, and thou shalt no leavened bread be seen with thee. Yes, sir. Neither shall there be leaven seen with thee in all thy quarters. So you don't have bread with yeast in your house. And all your quarters, you get it out. Now, this ain't the feast of, of uh, unleavened chips or uh, unleavened, uh, uh, <laughs> all these different types of stuff that have yeast in it. He's talking about bread. 
So don't go in there and throw everything out there. Yeah, he still like we did when we first learned about this piece. I think everybody made that mistake. So we understand. Don't these we put this, we put this, alright, preacher talking now. Pay attention. We put this piece, we put this bread outside of our houses. I mean, get rid of it. Don't go give it to nobody. Don't go give it to my Get rid of it. Don't sacrifice your salvation for a loaf of bread. Say, this is some good bread, man. Let me go ahead and give it to somebody. You call somebody else to see it. You ain't told them nothing, but you want to give them the bread. Tell them about the feast on that bread while you're getting, away, getting rid of this stuff. Don't just give it to them. Tell them. Go ahead. Verse 7. Unleavened bread shall be eaten seven days, and thou shalt no leavened bread be seen with thee, neither shall there be leaven seen with thee in all thy quarters. Yeah, I read that. All right, we'll touch on that. We should reread it. But the thing is, you have to eat unleavened bread those seven days. You got to eat a piece of unleavened bread for seven days. You don't have to go and just have, just eat a bunch of it. Just eat a little piece of a cracker. You did what God told you to do. So then just abstaining from bread and yeast, you, must, you also must eat leaven. I mean, it's an unleavened bread with that cracker or whatever bread you use that don't have leaven or yeast in it for seven whole days. Go ahead. Verse 8. And thou shalt show thy son in that day, saying, This is done because of that which the Lord did unto me when I came forth out of Egypt. Yes, sir. And it shall be for a sign unto thee upon thine aim. So you understand what he said? You, should, you can show your kids why you doing this. Why we? It's not silly for us to keep this feast because we understand God has a bigger plan behind this. Like I said, he just used this as a teaching tool, teaching tool which is bread. Bread ain't evil. He just trying to make sure you understand because some of us can't do nothing unless we see a sign. I got to see a sign. He giving you bread for that sign. Don't eat it. It puffs you. It puffs bread. It let me puff uh, bread up. It exposes itself. Make it rise. Just like sin. Puff you up. And sometimes sin ultimately kills you. So he's just using that as a teaching tool. Verse 9 says, And it shall be a sign unto it shall be a sign unto thee upon thy hand. Meaning that he know you his kid because you doing this. If you ain't doing this, you Satan kid. Understand that. Make it clear. You are part of Satan domain. You rolling with him if you're not doing this. Go ahead. And it shall be a sign unto thee upon thine hand and for a memorial between thine eyes. That means between your eyes, meaning that your mind always got to remember what's going on within this feast. It got orders, it got rules. Don't just be out there not thinking about this and you end up eating something you ain't supposed to eat. Just like the dietary law. We got to be thinking about everything that we put in our body because when we put swine in our body, we know what God is going to do with these folks that eat swine. He's going to kill them. So we got to make sure it's on our mind 24-7. That's why we, that's why I told my wife we're going to kind of prepare a lot of food because some people really don't quite understand it yet. They knew it is. And they think certain, certain words on certain labels is be a word you do you don't understand, but it ultimately means swine. You know what I'm saying? So you got to be really, really careful about what you bring into these feasts. Make sure you read this stuff because you can pollute the whole feast, not knowing. Go ahead, brother. And for a word between thine eyes that the Lord's law may be in thy mouth. Yes, sir. For with a strong hand, has the Lord brought thee out of Egypt. Go ahead, let's see how long we're supposed to keep these feet. Thou shalt therefore keep this ordinance in his season from year to year. From year to year. It don't stop. As long as we're upon this earth, we got to keep these feet from year to year. If you want to be a part of his kingdom. Now let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 6. Now these feasts mean much more than not eating bread with yeast for seven days. It symbolizes, makes you understand what is sin. The main thing is don't focus on sin these days. Be, be real careful about what you're doing. 
and much more than just not eating bread with these things. So I'm going to show you what he's trying to point out in these scriptures. Let's go back and see what Paul is talking about. Since we got a lot of people who follow Paul. First Corinthians chapter 5. We're going to start with verse 8. Go ahead. Therefore, let us keep the feast. <clears throat> uh -huh. Not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. That's what we're doing now. We're keeping the feast not with leaven, not with bread with yeast in it. We're not bringing it. We're making sure we understand how God wants this to run. Let's pull it for him one time. Go ahead. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators. He said, I wrote unto you in an epistle not to keep company with fornicators. Understand this is people who having sex before marriage. This is the leaven that he wants you to purge out your life. This is what he wants you to purge out your life and make it sure. These are sinful acts. This is what he wants you to focus on mostly. Not just bread. Go ahead. Yet not altogether with the fornicators of the world, yes, or with the covetous of ex extortioners, or with idolaters. For then must ye need go out of the world. He said, don't keep coming with these people. Be real, very careful who you're hanging around with. Fornicators, extortioners. We talk about who people who extort money. Making sure, oh, if you don't do this for me, I won't do this for you. And most of all, if you promote me to that job, I won't tell your wife that what we did last night. Extortion. This is what these people are doing. They're extorting. This is, this is sin. And that's on the books of the law in the, in the, in the government. Then he said, idolaters. All these people that have any crosses, all these people that have all this stuff, uh, the fish symbols on their car with the crossing, and the list go on and on. Man, so many symbols that they idolize, mm -hmm. and you can idolize a person. But go ahead, verse eleven. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. He said, I "Make sure don't keep company with these people. Don't keep company with them. If they are fornicators, they are adulterers, they doing all this sin. Don't call them your friend and hang around with them." Main reason because he don't want you to get influence with these people. And most people want to be friends with everybody. When you walk in this book, you don't have very many friends. I'm letting you know right now. Your biggest enemy is going to be your family. Period. This is what he's telling them. This is what he's telling us to work on. These are not Jeff Word. This is what the book say. Go ahead. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, mm -hmm. or covetous, or an idolater, mm -hmm. or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such and one, no eat, uh, one, no not to eat. Yes, sir. He said, don't even eat with him. You know this. You know this about this person. Extortioner, covetousness, railer, keeping up mess, keeping up stuff all the time. You know this about a person? Why are you hanging around with him? Why are you hanging around with them? Oh, that make me laugh. <laughs> he telling you not to keep company. I know it's hard. You're going to be on the island, y'all. Very few people are going to be doing what we're doing. But we want to get salvation. Go ahead. For what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within? Yes, sir. He's going to judge it without and within. Meaning that if you with God, follow his law, we're going to be judged by the law. And also the ones that don't believe in this going to be judged by them too. Go ahead. But them that are without, God judges. Therefore, put away from among yourselves that wicked person. Get away from him. That's the leaven. That is the leaven he want to make sure. That is the sin he wants you to make sure you put away. This feast is much more than not for seven days not eating bread with yeast in it. He's talking about purging out the sin out your life. 
Focus on that. Let's go to Matthew chapter 16 and verse 5. But so many people are focusing on their stomach. Man, I don't know, man. I, I, I like me some bread now. I like me some bread. I can't, I can't not eat bread for seven days. I said, try not eating for seven days. You talking about bread. Matthew 16 and verse 5. What? Well, if you don't want to follow this, I'm going to show you who your dad is. That's Satan, your dad. We must understand this. We must nail it home every time. Because so many people that stand where I stand play with this word. Oh, it's going to be all right, brother. Don't worry about that. You just, you, everybody going to sin. But when you are a habitual sinner, who keep going, doing the same thing over and over and over again without any type of recollection of anything. Most people say, well, God gonna forgive me. No, he won't. You keep on doing the same thing. He said, I'm not gonna forgive you for that because you are going out there doing it, premeditating it all day long. Mm -hmm. I don't hear the prayers of a sinner. Proverbs chapter 28, I don't hear it because you sin him. Over and over and over again. I'm not talking about the one who's trying. I'm talking about somebody that's just deliberately doing it. Don't care. God don't forgive me. Just say it like that. Then go out there and just fornicate. God don't forgive me. Then go out there and commit adultery. God don't forgive me. Then go out there and lie. Steal. God don't forgive me. Who are you fooling? You have received the leavening of the Pharisee. Another doctrine. This is what he say here, Matthew 16 and verse 5. We ain't going to hold you for long. We got one more after this. Go ahead. And when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Yes, sir. Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. He said, Make sure you understand what I'm talking about, about these false prophets. Sadducees and Pharisees are the ones that are false prophets. Telling you what to do, but they are not following. That's right. They're hypocrites. Go ahead. <laughs> and they reason among themselves, saying, it is because we have taken no bread. They were like, they reason like, man, we ain't got no bread. But listen to what Jesus is saying right here about this bread. Go ahead. Which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves? Because ye have brought no bread? You're like, why are you worried about bringing no bread? I'm with you. I can make bread up here. That's what they don't understand. And most people just following uh, this old thinking about their bellies and what they can eat. God will provide every time. And he's going to tell them this right here. Look at what, listen to what he say right here. Verse 9. Do ye y'all... Do ye yet not understand neither? Remember the five loaves of the five thousand and how many baskets ye took up. Jesus said, I fed five loaves of the five. I fed so many people with them five loaves. Thousand upon thousand of people. You worry about bread? You got me. I will provide. He's not just talking about bread. He wants you to see the bigger picture. He's saying. He's just using bread as a teaching tool. Go ahead. Neither the seven loaves of the four thousand, and how many baskets you took up. Go ahead. How is it that ye do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread, that ye should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? That's what he wants you to beware of. They focusing on the bread, 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 but they ain't focusing on the sin of the false prophets. How they tell you, you ain't got to keep no seven day. You ain't got to keep the holy day. What's wrong with you, man? You're going to call or something? Well, you're going to keep Easter. You're going to keep Christmas. And they can't read this stuff to you. But you tell them, you ain't got to do that. Jesus paid for it all. Understand what he's talking about right here. Go ahead. This is what he's talking about. Then understand, then understand they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread. He said, understand this. Not to beware of leaven and bread, don't no? He telling them, warning them. This ain't really what I'm talking about. But go ahead. This is what I'm talking about. 
but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. This is what he's talking about, doctrine. Their words, when they're telling you, you don't have to keep the seven day Sabbath and you still can go to heaven. You don't have to keep the dietary law. You can eat whatever you want to eat as long as you pray on it. That's the Pharisee doctrine. And I'm going to show you who, what they are trying to do, what they're trying to hide from you. We'll let you figure it out for yourself. Let's go to Ezekiel.